Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So it's finally time for it. I know you have been waiting for quite a while. I'm finally ready to share with you my Soviet Union guide. Now of course we are going to start in 1936 and we are going for historical. We are going to make some changes so this is not going to be entirely historical. Mostly one big change which will affect the war a lot. But I don't want to give you any spoilers so keep watching the video and you will see what happens. Now this guide was a lot of work, a lot of testing to come up with what uh, in my opinion is the, the best strategy, the perfect strategy. I'm really excited to share it with you and uh, hopefully you will enjoy this video. Okay, so we can start with the initial setup uh, as usual. Keep in mind that as I did for my past uh, few guides, uh, I will include uh, the researches and the list of focuses in chronological order in the description of the video. This also means that I will largely exclude them uh, from the video itself to keep it a bit shorter. Now, in the description from now on, uh, you can find sometimes a little arrow pointing to a specific focus. Uh, for example, the first one says uh, arrow de zinoveviate. <laughs> okay, so uh, with my Italian guides, everything was fine with the pronunciation. My German guides, the pronunciation was pretty bad. Uh, now, this one is going to be ter terrible. So I'm really sorry for my Russian friends, uh, but yeah, I will make a mess of the pronunciation of your names. I'm so sorry about that. Anyways, this is the focus in question and I will just point to it with an arrow. So that means uh, you go down until you can uh, get to it, which means uh, the path of Marxism, the center, the Stalin constitution, and then this one. Again, for the researchers, I'm showing you the first ones, uh, but from now on, uh, they will all be only in the description of the video. Now, the first thing that I like to do is uh, take care of my armies. Uh, so I shift click here to select all of them. 138 divisions and now we're going to split them uh, into several armies uh, depending on what they are so we take all of the cavalry i'm double clicking on them uh, to uh, divide them more efficiently all right so if you did it correctly you should have uh, one army with uh, the tanks uh, one with the cavalry one with uh, the weaker infantry one with mountaineers uh, one alone uh, and then uh, three infantry armies one of which has uh, 25 uh, divisions we're going to assign one of these uh, uh, divisions to the uh, weaker infantry army and this is more or less the initial setup now at this point we are also going to do something else uh, we're going to take uh, three of our mountaineers uh, and we are going to take uh, three um, infantry divisions and we are going to create a new army of six now this army of six uh, uh, is uh, the army of volunteers that we will send to spain as soon as the war starts the other thing we are going to do from the very beginning is uh, we are going to select the remaining 10 mountaineers uh, and we are going to start preparing a naval invasion from Leningrad uh, to the Netherlands. We want to send 3 here, 3 here, 3 here and the last one here. And again we are going to train all of them uh, by shift clicking here including the mountaineers. Now for the navy we are just going to gather the entire navy in uh, um, Leningrad. For what concerns the planes, you can select all of them by clicking up here and then shift clicking on the uh, planes you have. Hopefully their name is not an indication of how they are. And you can send them all to the same airport, it doesn't really matter which one, as long as it has enough uh, space for all of them. Okay, now let's talk about the military production. Uh, you want to have your guns at 10, support equipment at 5, uh, towed artillery at 5, uh, trucks at 5, anti-air at 4, small airframe at 2, and civilian train at 1. You can remove anything else in terms of military production. Once you have done this, uh, you want to increase uh, the infantry equipment uh, to 15. It means the next 5 uh, factories we build uh, are going to go into infantry equipment. In terms of uh, boats, uh, we're going to decrease the amount of boats produced to 1. The ones already in production for all of them we're going to prioritize finishing the smaller ones uh, which means uh, we set them all to the maximum amount of uh, dockyards but then we move uh, these larger ones to the bottom and that's it let's talk about construction we're going to build infrastructures uh, and uh, full military factories in uh, moscow uh, kharkov and krasnodar we're going to buy rubber from uh, british malaya and we're going to create an agency. Now we can actually start the game at speed 5. Uh, the next goal will be to justify on the Netherlands as soon as we have 50 political power. Here we are, we have 50 political power, so we can start our justification of Friesland. 
Okay, as we get the free operative slot, uh, see if there is anyone with uh, the seducer trait, which is the best trait. Uh, we have this nice guy, so we're going to get him and we're going to assign him to uh, spy, build the internet network in Mexico City. As you get to 150 political power, you want to get the popular figurehead advisor for the extra stability. Stability is very important because as you can see, we have some huge maluses from uh, low stability. And by picking this advisor, we reduce uh, those maluses uh, significantly. In terms of research, on the list you will find uh, the description support weapon 1. What I mean is uh, this one. Now, as soon as the civil war starts in Spain, uh, you want to send your volunteers. Uh, and of course, you want to send air volunteers as well. Now, I am going to assign them uh, this general because he's pretty good. Uh, and if he gets some good traits and survives Stalin, uh, we can use him later in uh, World War II. Now, at this point, uh, when the war starts, uh, you also want to switch uh, our spy from uh, uh, build Intel network into quiet Intel network. You may want to do it even a bit earlier, if you remember. You don't need as much uh, Intel in, uh, in Mexico. Uh, about 25 or 50 is enough. Now, as soon as you complete uh, this focus, uh, you want to take uh, war economy. War economy is huge, especially switching from civilian economy. This is the earliest we can get it. And we just got a discount on the political power cost. At the same time, you also want to start preparing your navy for the invasion. Then you select uh, the submarines and you send them here manually. You don't uh, press on support naval invasion yet. You just send them there. Okay, we got our claim on the Netherlands. You can uh, start a naval invasion and you can declare war to the Netherlands and then you can use uh, your fleet uh, select them like this uh, and you can assign the naval invasion support now these areas will be grayed out uh, but if you right click them they actually still work because our submarines are there so right now we have the superiority in all regions and our naval invasion will actually start as you can see they just left the harbor now, as your naval invasion is about to start, you may want to slow down the speed a little bit. There are a couple of things we need to take care of. One of them is that we got free civilian factories. Now, you want to build infrastructures and military factories in Odessa, Minsk, and Crimea. As soon as your naval invasion actually starts, uh, I suggest you use the force attack uh, special command. It may not be necessary, but it will increase your chances of uh, succeeding in the disembarking, which is very important. Once these units disembark, you can shift click on some of the regions down here so that they will keep going and conquer all of these provinces. Now, around this time, there are a couple more things we need to do. First of all, we have free military factories, uh, and, in, and secondly, we don't want our paranoia to increase over 25%, uh, so we want to use the Forge Satisfactory Production Reports uh, to bring it back down to zero. You want to do this uh, while the paranoia is between 20 and 25%. I'm going to do it right away. In terms of production, we are going to bring the planes to 5, uh, the artillery to 6, uh, and the trucks to 7. As you get your focus, uh, you should get some extra political power and you can use it for the army reform. Once all of your units disembarked, you can send some of them to Amsterdam and the rest down here. As soon as you take Amsterdam, the war should be over. Now in the peace conference, you want to puppet the Netherlands, the Dutch East Indies, you want the resource rights from the Dutch East Indies. This is very important. Resource rights from the Netherlands. World reparation from the Dutch East Indies. World reparation from the Netherlands. And you want their navy. Make sure to do it in this order because sometimes if you take the navy first, the game will bug out and you will not be able to take the other stuff. Another thing you want to do is you want to send back your volunteers to Spain. As we get to 100 political power, you want to take uh, the ground support uh, advisor for the air experience. Now at this point, and even a little bit earlier if you can, I slightly forgot in this case, uh, as soon as you can, uh, you want to take uh, the professional officer corps uh, spirit. When you get free dockyards, you want to build more convoys. You can just assign all future dockyards to convoys. 
When you get free military factories, you want to increase your plane's production to 15. Now, you want to keep an eye on your political paranoia because we don't want this uh, to be above uh, 25%. Uh, so when you're at 24% uh, or something like that, uh, you want to start an inspection in the Navy. Now, once you get the message from the inspection in the Navy, no matter what, uh, this is actually a pretty good outcome. Uh, you take uh, the uh, decrease uh, political paranoia event. We don't care much about the Navy, so whatever happens, we can sacrifice it. Now, once you get this message, this is very important. In a future video, I will show you what happens if you kill this guy. But for now, for this guy, it's very important that you do not uh, kill uh, this guy. So he's still needed. Uh, it's the right answer. Now, once again, once your political paranoia is close to 10, 25%, we want to start an inspection in the Air Force this time. Now, again, whatever happens, you want to decrease your political paranoia. You usually get a debuff, uh, which lasts only for a certain amount of days. Uh, it will expire before World War II starts. Uh, we don't need to fight any more wars in between, uh, so we don't care that much. We just don't want the paranoia to get too high. Now, once you get the message saying that you have doctrines available, remember to take the spirits first. Uh, especially the air ones. So you want to take uh, the air crew surveys uh, and uh, the centralized control. In terms of the army experience, you don't want to take these spirits yet. We will wait for them later. Meanwhile, what you can do is uh, you can adjust uh, the templates uh, for later. I'll show you what I'm going to do for each template here. I will just show it quickly so you can pause the game to see each one. This is going to become our standard template. For Mountaineers I'm just going to add an anti-air to make the combat width 25. For Motorized I will use my standard 21 combat width template, but I will only use the Engineer Company support because I want to save some army experience. And we're going to change these guys into a variation of my defensive divisions. Uh, we're going to leave them the military police, it actually gives some good defense. We're going to add uh, the engineer company, nothing else here to save uh, army experience. Uh, we just want to make the combat with uh, 10, so we are going to set them up uh, in this way. We keep them on low priority. We are not going to change the tanks for now and we're going to remove the paratroopers because I'm not going to use them. Now when you get this message, I suggest you seize uh, the gold reserves uh, because uh, minus 5% consumer good factories for 365 days is a great deal. You want to sign uh, the pact with the Germans. And as soon as you complete uh, this focus, uh, you want to take uh, the industrial concern. It's now discounted and it's another minus 2% consumer good factories. Now, next we are going to pick the military conspiracy. It's only 35 days, uh, but we are not going to make it in time uh, for the political paranoia. So here there is a little bit of RNG. We may get uh, a negative event uh, before we actually complete this focus. On free sieve, uh, you want to build uh, full military factories in all of your 100% provinces, including infrastructures and then military factories in Leningrad and in Kiev. Okay, we were actually quite lucky. I didn't get any negative event uh, and uh, we got uh, the military conspiracy done. Now, if you followed my research order, more or less at this point of the game, you should have completed the survivability studies and the rage improvements, uh, which means it's time to design our new planes. I'm going to use my usual designs, which means uh, this one for Cass and this one for Fighter. It's actually slightly different because the Germans have access to uh, cannon. Now we're going to produce both F1 and C1 with 10 factories each. We're going to remove 10 factories from the infantry equipment in order to produce them at maximum capacity. Now to be completely honest with you, this uh, civil war in Spain is going surprisingly well. We are not supposed to expand. Uh, actually, usually at this point we almost lost. Shouldn't make much of a difference, but I mean, just know that by default you usually lose this war. Once again, you want to keep uh, an eye on your political paranoia. As it gets to around 25%, uh, you can use uh, Forge Satisfactory Reports uh, to decrease it again. Once you complete uh, this focus, you want to start assassinating Trotsky. I suggest you do the subtle assassination. I usually press on automatically repeat even when it's not possible to automatically repeat it because that way I will get a message and I will remember that it is done. As you can see, we also got some free military factories. We're going to increase uh, the production of both planes to 15, anti-air to 5, and trucks uh, to 10. Now, you will soon get a new operative. Uh, as usual, if you find one with the seducer, pick him, and you can start uh, spying on Germany with him. Now, for some reason, we are winning this civil war in Spain, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I actually don't want to win this war because you never win this war. So I don't know what's going on here. 
My troops actually did amazingly well. Again, you want to keep an eye on the political paranoia and when it is about uh, 25%, you want to start another inspection in the navy. Again, whatever the malus, it doesn't matter, take it and decrease the paranoia. At 150 political power, you want to take the tank designer, we're going for the medium tank designer that gives reliability and soft attack. Now, a bit like before, at this point, uh, we don't really want to do another inspection of the air force, uh, or in the air force, uh, and our political paranoia is increasing, so there is a little bit of RNG. We'll probably get a negative message, hopefully it's something concerning the navy, something we can take. We'll see it soon. Okay, we were quite lucky, because it's an advisor accused of treason, we don't really care about him, so he can go. And we get the political paranoia decreased by 30. This is a very lucky event. Again, this is the only little bit of RNG that we have in this run. Now, at this point, we also have some free military factories and we want to increase the production of both planes uh, to 25. Now, when you get free civilian factories, it's probably time to also switch uh, from uh, build Intel network into quiet Intel network in Germany. With the free civilian factories, we're going to build infrastructures and military factories in uh, Vinicia, Cherkasy, Yaroslav, Smolensk and Stalingrad. As you get to 150 political power, you want to take the aircraft designer. We are going for the light aircraft designer. Okay, now as soon as we complete uh, this uh, technology and we unlock the medium howitzer, we want to start designing our new tanks. This is the design we are going to use uh, for the Soviet Union. Now we want to give absolute priority to our new tanks. We are going to keep the guns at 10, we are going to reduce everything else to 5, including the planes. Except for anti-air, which will go down to 3. Now as soon as you complete this focus, you can start uh, taking the special decisions and uh, we will accomplish a high heal that is actually a very good one, so we want to pick it right away. Okay, the civil war in Spain in the end uh, actually ended as it should. Around the 20th of June, uh, you should uh, assassinate uh, Trotsky. This is great uh, because it will decrease uh, by a lot uh, the stability penalties we have. At the same time, as soon as this is done, you can also start uh, preparing a collaboration government in Germany. Now, since by this point of the game we have a lot of trucks, uh, you can actually select your armies and you can increase the motorization priority to maximum. By the way, now that our volunteers are back, uh, you can send back uh, the three mountaineers uh, to the original army they were part of. Uh, now, as you get the political power, you can also pick uh, the uh, artillery design. At 150 political power, if he is still alive, uh, you can take the captain of industry for faster uh, infrastructure and railway construction. Sadly, in my game, uh, uh, our dear Stalin uh, yeah, didn't like him very much. So I'm going to take this dude instead, uh, that's going to still uh, increase a bit uh, the railway construction. It's not as good. Uh, but it's better than nothing. You can take uh, more metal, uh, means more weapons, uh, to reduce uh, the need uh, for imports. See, you get this notification when your collaboration government is done, which means uh, you can now start uh, spying on Germany again. At 100 political power, we are finally going to take the military theorist, and that means we can also switch our doctrines. Uh, not so much the air doctrine, if you already took the spirits, you can actually start going down this path. But the land doctrine, we want to switch from mass assault uh, into mobile warfare. We want to take mobile warfare. And then we want to go on and adjust uh, our templates. Especially the tank template. Now this is going to be quite expensive uh, because we want to change uh, this template almost uh, completely. For the Soviet Union, I'm using a slightly different one. We're going up to 42 combat width. The reason is that the Soviet Union has uh, some big maluses on the organization. And if I use my usual template, uh, we are going to lock organization to actually be effective with our tanks. So that's also useful for our future guides. Uh, I will include this template in my options for armored divisions. We're going to make this an elite division, so they get the priority in terms of equipment. There is one more support company that we will add a bit later. Now, if you have some spare army experience at this point, you also want to take maneuver warfare. In addition to that, we are going to recruit another tank, only one division, because we want to make our army of tanks uh, of 12 divisions, and currently it is only 11. We also want our motorized to be 12 divisions, and we only have one, so we are going to recruit another 11 of them. And finally, we want to have another 29 defensive divisions. 29. 
On free military factories, you can just increase the tank production to maximum. You will decrease it a bit later, but temporarily, that's the best we can do with our factories. At 100 political power, we want to take army regrouping. We also want to keep an eye on our spies in Germany because they are close to 50%. As soon as they get to 50%, we want uh, to start another collaboration government. There we go. Make sure to also always switch them to uh, quality Intel network while you do so. Now, as soon as you unlock uh, your engineer company too, what this means is we can now make uh, our uh, flame tanks. We're going to use uh, this design for flame tanks. We want to start producing them right away. Three factories are enough. You can take them away from uh, the uh, usual tanks. At the same time, you can also add them to our template. We are going to take the concealment advisor just in case the enemy has the air superiority. That doesn't usually happen, but just in case uh, we're going to take this one. Alternatively, if you feel like you will have the air superiority, we may actually do it for this time. You can take the ace generation chance uh, plus 10% or the close air support advisor. Now, as we get free military factories, uh, we can start building infrastructures and then forts uh, at the border with Romania. So here, and we want to build three forts in each province, like this. As soon as we get to 30 political power, we want to take, uh, we will accomplish a high yield again. Now, as we get unassigned divisions, it means our new divisions are now deployed and we can start fixing our armies a little bit better. So of course, we want our motorized to be in the same army. Uh, out of the new 29 uh, defensive divisions we created, we want to give uh, farm 5 of them to the other army, so that we have two armies like that. We can also change this uh, originally standard division into a defensive one. So basically what we want is uh, two full 24 uh, divisions uh, defensive armies. So with both uh, commanders, you can start a shift uh, exercise command. We're going to sign the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. Now, as soon as you get your improved small airframe, it's time to design the new fighters. In terms of design, I'm going to use this one because as of now, out of all of the designs I shared with you, this is still my favorite. It has the highest air attack and while it is not the best for pure trading, it is the best at killing enemy planes, in my opinion. We want the production of these new fighters to be up to 25. We are going to take these factories from our tanks and then we're going to give them back uh, to the tanks. Okay, as soon as our collaboration government uh, in Germany is done, uh, we want to start spying on Germany again. By the way, we are going to completely ignore the border conflicts with Japan. We just don't care. Okay, so World War II is starting, but it's not starting for us uh, just yet. So for now, we're just going to wait and uh, see what happens. When we get to 200 political power, we can finally take uh, the armor advisor. This is uh, fundamental for our armor divisions. Now, if you get free civilian factories at this point, what I suggest doing is uh, start upgrading the uh, hubs, the supply hubs uh, in the border areas. This will be very beneficial for later on. Okay, now as soon as Germany honors the pact and gives us uh, our part of Poland, we are going to prepare our armies uh, with our war setup. Now, first of all, we want to assign some uh, generals. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to assign a good field marshal. The good ones are dead, Stalin killed them, so we need to promote a new one. Now, what I usually do is I promote the one who fought in Spain, which in my case is this guy. Sadly, he got uh, the negative debuff uh, because of Stalin. So it may still be worth it, but I don't really like that minus 10% division recovery rate. So I think for this time, I'm going to use a different one. Most likely this one seemed to have pretty good traits. So I'm going to promote him and we're going to use him as our field marshal. Let's see what we can get. Well, we can get uh, the offensive doctrine, organization first, we also get charismatic. Not that bad. Okay, the second most important general is the one leading our tanks. For this one, uh, we want a general with good offensive stats uh, and with good supply consumption reduction. So I guess uh, this guy is the guy for us. Motorized doesn't matter as much, uh, so you can give them a less uh, important general. For our main infantry armies, uh, we want some good defensive generals. I'm going to use this one. Finally, for the support uh, defensive army, we are going to use anyone. It doesn't really matter. The other army is defensive, it's much less important, so we can use a less uh, uh, valuable uh, field marshal. They are the same, so it doesn't really matter. Maybe just try to avoid the generals which have the debuff uh, given by Stalin. 
Okay, let's talk about positioning. We want our tanks to be positioned in this area. We are going to give them a spearhead order to conquer this area of Poland. Now, if you watch my previous videos, you already know that I always assign my motorized units just behind the tanks to cover the front as quickly as possible as they expand. For our main armies, we're going to use one to cover the upper part of the front and we're going to use one for the lower part of the front, like this. For the defensive army, we can assign them the entire front. Now, if you see that you're running low on supplies, uh, you can temporarily remove uh, this defensive army for the front, from the front and leave it a bit more behind. Now, for our secondary theater, we are going to protect the southern front. We're going to use our mountaineers to cover this area of the front. We're going to use our defensive units to cover this area here. Do not assign them down here because they will die for low supplies. There will be mountaineers here anyway. We're going to use uh, our cavalry as uh, support uh, back here. And this last army, we can leave it free. We can give them a full back line back here. They can go to reinforce uh, whoever needs it. We are only going to attack with our tanks. We're also going to deploy all of our new planes. We're going to make sure to select all of them, assign them the air superiority and close air support missions. And then uh, we will need to move them around these airports uh, so that they don't uh, completely fill the airport. We don't want these malices. Now, we also want to decrease the production of tanks uh, because we are going to get enough by the time the war starts. Uh, so we don't need those many factories on tanks anymore. We're going to bring them down to 25 factories. We're going to increase uh, the guns to 15, uh, the artillery to 8, uh, and the rest is going into the fighters. With your main army, make sure you have the motorization priority to maximum and you want uh, the execution of battle plans to be aggressive. You also want to start building infrastructures in all of the new regions we occupied in Poland, at least the border ones. You can assign all of your planes uh, to your tanks uh, and they will just automatically go to the regions and the airports they need to be. Around this time you should also be able to start the final collaboration government uh, in, uh, in Germany. Whenever you get uh, to about 100 political power, you want to change from volunteer only to limited conscription. If you haven't taken this spirit yet, uh, now it's the time to do so. If you already have the spirit, uh, you can go down the doctrine path. Now, as soon as you complete uh, this technology, you can design the new CAS. You should do it as soon as possible. I'm going to use my usual design for CAS. And I'm going to set the production of both uh, planes uh, to 25. Whenever you can, uh, you should pick uh, We Will Accomplish a High Yield again. You can also take Radio Propaganda for extra war support. Now, if you get uh, free civilian factories before the war starts, uh, you can build more forts on the front or you can upgrade uh, the supply hubs on the front. Uh, I probably would prioritize uh, upgrading the hubs on the front. Especially this tree. Maybe this one too. Now, it is June, and during this month, usually, Germany will declare war to you. This is not exactly fixed, so it may change, it may vary a little, but within a few months, Germany will declare war to you. Now, the funny thing that I haven't showed you yet uh, is that by taking the Netherlands, Germany is actually struggling to advance on this front, uh, so they are still stuck in Belgium. By this time, usually Germany has defeated Belgium and even France, uh, but at the moment they are still stuck in here, they cannot advance, uh, they will be forced to declare war to us, but their situation on the other front will not be as smooth as it would normally be for them. Now let's wait until they declare war to us, and then we'll consider this first part of the tutorial done. The war will actually be covered in the next video. One last thing we can do before the war starts is we are starting to accumulate a decent amount of tanks, so we can start recruiting a new 12 divisions tank army. Finally, Germany declared war to us. Uh, this took uh, way longer than usual, so expect it between uh, June and December, but December is very late. They usually do it much, uh, much sooner than this. And they usually do it uh, by declaring war to the Netherlands. In any case, uh, by taking the Netherlands, we got them stuck in here, and we still start this war a little bit earlier than it would normally start. Now, we're officially at war with Germany, so my next video will be a guide on how to win uh, effectively this war. Now guys, this was a lot of work and now it seems uh, everything seems to be very smooth uh, as you watch this guide, uh, you pick this focus, uh, you, pick, you take this decision, but this took a lot of planning. 
I know you guys love uh, country guides, I enjoy making them, uh, but this really takes a lot of time. Uh, so please uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, show me your appreciation so that I will be encouraged to make more uh, country guides in future. Uh, other than that, as usual, of course, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.